You're so well spoken. Are you sure you're Filipino? How are you educated if you're from Africa? Is your English really that good? So, where, where are you really from? My name is Ahmed. Uh, I am 26 years old uh, and I'm an undergraduate student at Kiel. I study international relations with philosophy. So certain examples of microaggressions I, I've experienced in the, in the past include the typical ones that you hear of, people asking you where you're really from. I mean, I grew up in Northampton when I used to live in the UK and that's the, the initial answer I give and then I'm asked, no, nah, but like, where are you really from? That's something you typically get. So my name's Ade and I'm 20, turning 21 in June, and I study international relations and I'm in my second year. Microaggression usually comes as an insult or invalidation. So you either get insults that are sort of wrapped up in compliments where they associate characteristics that they like about you with whiteness. So, oh, you're so well spoken, or I can't believe you got here, like at university at that point. My name is Zahira, I'm 19 and I'm a politics student. One example of microaggression I've experienced in the past is I've been on the bus and it'll be a packed bus to the point everyone's standing but no one will sit next to me because they see me wearing a scarf and they see me like a terrorist or like an unfriendly person despite me smiling and just being like everyone else. So how microaggressions uh, feel in comparison to overt racism. In a way, you know how to deal with it better because while obviously it's, it's usually more aggressive, it's usually more directed, and in that sense, it's a horrible feeling, but you can address it very directly. But with microaggressions, uh, it's difficult because while it's less aggressive, there's also much less you can do about it. It's much harder to convince people that it happens or that it exists. In university, especially coming from London, which is relatively more diverse, you find yourself in a situation many times for the first time, being in an environment where you're the only person of colour. Even in classrooms, even in seminars, you have situations where you're trying to talk and it's like, oh, well, I don't understand how race plays into an issue, so and so and so, when how could you understand when you're not in my position, when you're not open to understanding in the first place? I've experienced microaggressions at uni and it makes me feel more upset because it's more so among the students who I'd think would be more so my friends and be more liberal and more understanding I would know to like not stereotype me or like be subtly racist but instead they do and say stuff I have good English even though it's like one of my first languages. I think microaggressions do have a long-term effect on, on things like mental health. Before I experienced any racism and actually lived like in a bubble, you could say, I was perfectly fine, I was confident. But because of all the microaggressions and stereotypes I've faced since wearing a hijab, it's caused me to develop anxiety and I feel really anxious going into new spaces. I've been fortunate I have friends who have gone through similar situations and that's helped um, but you find a lot of the times a lot of people don't they often feel isolated or they can very easily start questioning themselves and their self-esteem can go down. The reason it particularly affects mental health is because uh, mental health professionals a lot of them might not recognize that they exist and therefore it's difficult to feed back feed into the kind of the therapeutic process I believe. I don't think there's any straightforward solution to stop microaggression. I think it starts with education, so people learning why it's not acceptable to say certain things, why people might get offended by certain things, and as microaggressions often played off as banter, why that's not okay. Also having support systems and procedures in institutions that help people report the problem and take the problem seriously. 
I think a solution to this is, just like we're taught about racism in class and how to stand up if you see racism, we should also be taught about microaggressions and like to stand up for microaggressions and that they are real and it's not political correctness, it's just not being rude or horrible. I think there are solutions to stop microaggressions within society. Um, I think the solutions comprise mainly of how we've typically abolished other forms of discrimination historically, which is the work of, of activists to engage in campaigns, to write about it, to protest about it, to campaign. What I think is, is most important is listen to people of colour and, and, uh, and just take it on board. Thank you.